all of the education, higher education included, is about to undergo profound transformation driven by the explosion in information technology, knowledge technologies. And Caltech has to be a part of that and hopefully even assume a lead role in some aspects of it. Teaching is a part of our job and it's actually part of our social contract with the society. We're supposed to generate knowledge but also teach the new generations. And whether we like it or not, all of the education is moving online. All of humanity's knowledge is already available online. And so that really changes the perspective of what do we teach, where is the human interaction part and so on. My name is Yasser Abu Mustafa. I am a professor of electrical engineering and computer science at Caltech and I taught the first Caltech MOOC last year. It was entitled Learning from Data, and it's an introductory machine learning course. A MOOC is a, an expression that uh, I don't particularly like, nobody really likes, but it's sort of, you know, stuck, so we have to d d go with it. It stands for Massive Open Online Course. The online courses have been around for a very long time, but it's the advance of technology and the culture of the internet that made it massive, that added this aspect and also gave an idea that this is really a change in the classroom and had a lot of people interested in taking part in it. My name is Antonio Rangel. I'm a professor of neuroscience and economics. I recently taught a MOOC called Principles of Economics for Scientists. It's basically a course on principles of economics with a lot of calculus, a lot of math. It's a very unique course that we teach at Caltech that could only be probably taught in a two or three universities around the world that assumes that the students are very well equipped mathematically when they come to the study of economics and that allows us to introduce principles for them at a much higher level that is normally taught. I'm Henry Lester, the Bren Professor of Biology and Biological Engineering at Caltech, and I taught a MOOC entitled Drugs and the Brain. When you teach online, Instead of imagining 60,000 students, you think about one student. You try to explain clearly, you try to keep a sense of humor, and you try to look that student in the eye and understand whether he or she is really getting it. The class I taught was Astronomy 21, which is Galaxies and Cosmology. Since I was delivering all of the content to my students online, which they can absorb whenever they wanted and listen to it as many times as they needed to, we got to use the classroom time for actual gelling of the information, solving out little problems, estimating things. This is what I think the professor and student interaction should be all about. They can get the facts from books, videos, PDFs, but that last part of interacting with somebody and making sure it all sticks, this is what's enabled by the flipped classroom. I'm Ryan Trainer. I'm a fifth year graduate student at Caltech and I was a TA for the course Galaxies and Cosmology. I'm sitting here in my office and I share this office with other grad students. So from time to time when I'd be working on um, the course material, uh, writing questions, um, discussing things on the forums, I'd have students ask me how this course was going because this is a very new thing for our department. And I think on the whole, uh, the grad students were excited by the idea of teaching a course that's much larger than any other course that gets taught at Caltech. Online, we had 28,000 students sign up for this course. Uh, our department is a department that's very invested in outreach and in bringing um, astrophysics and astronomy to people outside of the walls of our university. And so I think a lot of the students were excited by the idea that we were uh, able to do that and able to experiment and maybe develop some new ways for doing that using new technology. The students uh, watch lectures that were prepared by the professor, uh, but they also uh, answer quiz questions that were, have been put together by the TAs to try to make sure that they're learning the course material and uh, are understanding what's presented in the lectures. Uh, they also participate in the online forums that allow them to ask questions of the TAs and of the professor, um, talk with other students um, in order to digest the course material, um, discuss other resources that they found online or in books that they found that were useful for further exploring the course material. Indeed, it was a very lively discussion from all over the world, and it gave people the feeling of a classroom, a virtual classroom, and some of them actually struck friendships through that uh, discussion forum. And at the end of the course, people really had the feeling that, you know, putting the components together, someone commented that it was very difficult to, to remember that they were actually not in class. 
because the, the, the videos were so nicely done and the other aspects made it feel like a class. So it was a full experience for a lot of people. There are very different uh, approaches to taping the video lectures for this MOOC. Some people like giving a real lecture with the students and having them taped. I prefer uh, doing it in a personalized studio like the one you see in the background in which I am taping myself and recording my voice and I have an animation table in which I can simulate the experience of a whiteboard and basically tape chunks of lectures, review them. If I don't like them, I delete them. Do several takes until I'm happy with it. In terms of infrastructure support, the two offices, the first one was Academic Media Technology, who were responsible for broadcasting the course and uh, properly editing the, the lectures to have the permanent version that, would, that is posted perpetually. And the Alumni Association was very instrumental in the uh, publicity of the course. I've worked with uh, the Center of Teaching and Learning from the beginning, uh, who, have, who were extremely helpful with details of the technology, but even more important for changing some thoughts about how conceptualized teaching in this space. Doing these videos made me actually improve the lectures that I was delivering because seeing yourself on camera and having to rethink the slides and so on actually led to improvements of my material. Through this experience, I really think I've been able to learn some other skills and some teaching skills that will be really important to my future career and to my ability to share what I do with other people. Now I'm trying to start a new scientific field, which I call inside-out pharmacology. And I want to get that field launched as soon as possible. And one way to launch it, in addition to teaching our very bright Caltech students, is to teach a wider audience of students. When you think of teaching, a professor has two jobs, to do research and to teach. I think of research as producing the results that make Caltech what it is. I think of teaching as reproducing, creating people who will do the same job later on. And if you think in terms of impact on society, I believe that reproducing is at least as important as producing. I think that one of the most important things in being a good teacher is um, to prepare, prepare, and then prepare a little bit more. And when you think you're done, prepare even more. And when you are taping lectures that thousands of people will see, and they're very public, I think that gives you an incentive to think things very carefully in a way that you wouldn't have before. Also, through these discussion boards, you get very detailed feedback about many aspects of your lectures. So that helps you very quickly understand what's working and what's not. We have lots of teaching research. This is a body of information that professors who teach online courses are only now rediscovering. These classes reveal there is a huge population out there of students, many of whom are actually undergrad age or graduate students, who are really talented, but for some reason or other, never made it to Caltech. So we can uncover that talent, maybe we'll bring some of them in, but also we should consider the possibility of having a virtual Caltech community that in addition to students who reside here, there might be other Caltech students studying same quality material, same quality students being exposed to the same rigor. Eventually, it could be that there'll be no students on campus, that uh, the human interaction part will have to be organized in some other way, and that is an important part. These are issues that all of the academia needs to solve. MOOCs are here to stay. They're gonna transform the educational landscape. Like every transformational technology, they offer great opportunities and have some risks, and it's very important for Caltech, for our Caltech, that we explore it properly, we experiment and we figure out how to take advantage of these technologies to maximize our mission. I believe in our mission, this should not change it, but is there a way that we can use the MOOC technology with all of its potential to become better teachers, better researchers, to attract better talent and maybe, hopefully, to also attract more resources for Caltech. I think Caltech is in a unique position to set the quality right for MOOCs in general. Caltech has always worked on the premise of quality rather than quantity. And the impact of Caltech is completely disproportionate on the positive side compared to its size. And when it comes to MOOCs, basically, if we choose the right courses and put the right effort to make them the quality that is befitting of Caltech's name, then people who have access to so many MOOCs outside from so many venues 
we realize that when they watch a Celtic MOOC, the quality is there and that reputation will enhance and reinforce what Caltech is about. What will the Caltech classroom look like in five or ten years? I don't know, but I sure want to find out, and I sure want to be there teaching it.